Hello everyone and welcome to lecture one for EH 201 um, American Lit, Introduction to American Lit. This 201 is all about early American Lit from the beginnings and colonization all the way up into the 1800s. Um, and so we're going to actually begin with the colonization of America and the literature that was written in the time. So each week I will give you a screencast lecture on the time period itself. Um, historical uh, events that were happening at the time, uh, some background information on the weekly um, authors and what uh, their contributions to that particular time period and uh, give you some things to think about as you're approaching the text. So you always want to kind of start with this lecture first and then work your way into the weekly readings. So this is for this first week. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, early colonization uh, in our four with our four authors this week. Um, if you it's been a long time since you studied history, which it shouldn't be technically because last year in tenth grade or two years ago in tenth grade, uh, if you're a senior, um, you had um, early American history in the colony. So it shouldn't be too far removed from your mind. But if you need a little bit of a refresher, uh, John Green, who is a, an author, a young adult lit author, phenomenal uh, at history. He loves history. He's kind of nerdy. Um, he does these crash courses in U.S. history. They're on YouTube. I suggest anytime you're having to study history, see if you can find a John Green crash course video on the particular topic because he does a great job of making it relatable, making it understandable. There's two videos here that you can check out on the events that were leading up to colonization, which is where we kind of get started uh, the, about the Native Americans that were already here, um, the explorers, and the breakaway from England uh, in the first place. So if it's been a while and need a refresher, you can check out those crash courses in American Land. So we are actually starting with our, our literature that, that I've chosen, we're starting with about the fourth attempt uh, at colonization. There'd only been one successful, and successful is a very loose term, uh, colonization in uh, America, and that would be Jamestown, which was the first one, but it was still really kind of small and primitive. Um, ours really picks up with the fourth attempt to colonize with the Massachusetts Bay Colony. But before we talk about that, let's talk a little bit about Puritanism and um, the beginnings of Puritanism and the breakaway from the church and the whole purpose behind the move to America. Um, so you have the Church of England. So if you didn't know or don't remember, the Church of England was established uh, by Henry VIII. So Henry VIII was married to a woman, Isabella of Spain, um, and that was his first wife. And uh, she was older when they met. She was actually married to his brother, uh, and then he married her uh, after his brother passed, uh, and he was very young when they married. And she was a lot older, and she was really past her childbearing years um, when she married Henry. Um, so she, she gave birth to a daughter, um, but it, it took a lot out of her. It literally almost killed her. Um, and, um, she really could not produce any more children. And so Henry, obviously as a king, he, he wanted a male heir because, you know, the lineage passes from male to male. And I think that's just a male thing too. You want to male to carry on the name. Um, but she just was unable to, to have another um, baby for him, a male heir, despite several attempts. And so he wanted a divorce. He wanted to divorce uh, her so that he could remarry someone who was capable of producing him a male heir, a legitimate male heir. He had a couple of illegitimate uh, children that would never have been able to take the throne. So the Catholic Church said, no way, Jose, it's not going to happen. You have to stay married. You're once married, always married, that kind of thing. And so Henry was like, you know what? I'm just going to start my own church. And so he did. He started the Church of England. Um, and they allowed him to get his divorce uh, from his first wife. And he would go on um, many more times to marry and, and, and divorce uh, or have them killed. You know, whatever, whatever it needed to happen. 
So, the Church of England has some shaky beginnings anyway. So, this Church of England, the members of the Church of England, and we're still in Britain now, so uh, just bear that in mind. We're, um, the Church of England, uh, there were many members that believed that the Church had become corrupt. And, granted, seeing its foundation... It wasn't too far of a stretch. So they, they believed that, that the church would begin focusing more on man's ideas than on God's. And, you know, these members believed that, you know, God's word, the Bible, it was the final authority. It wasn't man's ideas and man's beliefs. It was God. So they believed this so strongly that they felt that they should just separate completely from the church. Um, which was very radical for the time period. So this group, they called themselves the Separatists. I know it's a difficult name to remember. That's exactly what they did. They literally separated themselves by an entire ocean from the church. And so this was your first group of pilgrims who traveled on the Mayflower to the New World in 1620 and set up the, um, the colony at Jamestown. Now, there was another group of people within that sect that really believed that, yeah, it was corruption, it was happening, it, it was um, it was all around, but they weren't quite so drastic uh, in their, their wanting to just completely start a new religion and leave the church. They wanted to take the religion of the Church of England and purify it and make it better and bring it back around to what it was uh, in initially planned to be. So, in 1629, this group of Puritans, also um, a very uh, hard name to remember. Uh, they weren't very creative with their title, Puritan, Purify. Um, they named themselves the Company of Massachusetts Bay in New England. They asked the English government if they could um, set up a colony in the Americas. It was freshly minted over there, lots of space. Um, can they move away from England and set up this new purified version of the of the Church of England, a religious colony. And so they were granted their petition and that's where we start. So enter John Winthrop. John Winthrop was born in Groton, England. Um, he attended Cambridge. He learned about the Puritan belief system. He became a lawyer. He wanted to become a minister, but, you know, at the time, it, it, law, more money, right? So, he wanted, he decided to practice law, and so, he, um, he knew that when Charles I took the throne in England, that the Puritans were going to have a hard time. Um, Charles was a lot more radical, um, in his beliefs, and, he decided that the best plan of action was for them to move uh, away from England. So, they climb on board uh, the ship, the Arabella. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and decide that they're going to, to move away, away from the influence of the Church of England. And he... He's going to be elected governor of the new colony, um, and really, it's kind of like the father, uh, or the father of Puritan beliefs in the Americas. So, he sought to purify the church. They believed that they were on an errand into the wilderness, uh, this mission from God to create a model community uh, and fulfill God's divine covenant, and so that was their plan to purify the church. And they were going to literally eat, sleep, and breathe the Puritan religion. So, they get on this ship, the Arbella, in England. Um, they're, they're headed, they're going to head across to establish what they're going to call the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And so, while he's on the ship, he gives this moving sermon entitled A Model of Christian Charity, which you're going to get to read, um, on the ship uh, before leaving. And so, this sermon kind of laid out the ideals of the type of settlers, the type of colonists that this group intended 
to create. Um, and within that, God has a place for every man. Every man has a purpose. And how each person is going to fulfill that purpose in the new in the new world. So typology is a method developed by the Puritans to increase understanding scripture within historical and current events. So it takes the events in the Bible, primarily Old Testament, not New Testament, and uses it to predict and understand meanings uh, in events and persons in personal situations within their daily life. And so the Puritans believe that they're fulfilling God's covenant by creating their new colony. Um, and to do that... They were granted this covenant of grace by God, um, and they would have salvation not by their good words and good deeds, but through their faith and through their um, their ad adherence to the religion. And so, Winthrop uses a lot of typology. You're going to see it in his speech, and that's basically just using those events from the and the scripture to back everything um, up, okay? So, I want you to read John Winthrop. I want you to read um, both texts, A Model of Christian Charity and the Journal of John Winthrop. And paying attention to, um, in A Model for Christian Charity, I want you to pay attention to the city on the hill analogy. What does Winthrop mean by that? What is the city on a hill? Think about the biblical um, context behind that. And you'll see that um, in my text notes. Um, the, the biblical um, origin of that phrase. What's his purpose in this speech? Is this sermon that he gave on this ship. What exactly is it that he's trying to get across to this group of of colonists or would be colonists they're not colonists yet um and so think about those things and then uh, the second um entry that you're or the second text that you're going to read by Winthrop is an excerpt from the journal of John Winthrop and so he has in his entries it came from a, a, a text a larger book um and we're only reading kind of a snippet of that book um but in these entries he's going to discuss a wide variety of, of things that happened in the Massachusetts Bay Colony during his time as governor, including um, when they originally sighted land, the illness epidemics that they came across, um, earthquake, the loss of a child, and the crimes of two members of their community and how they dealt with that. And so, what I want you to think about in that text is what specific behaviors did Winthrop expect of the colonists who were part, and I see a spelling error, colonists, who were part of the covenant community. What did he expect from them um, behavior-wise? And then what were the consequences of breaking that covenant with God? If they didn't live according to those expectations, what were the consequences of that? And so those are the two things that I want you to think about. Now, these two things, when I give you um, guided questions like this, uh, and as you read and you're kind of making notes about it and you're thinking about those things, they will help you with your discussion posts at the end of um, each week. Uh, and they'll also help you on the test because you may see those questions again. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Okay, so if you've read, um, read John Winthrop, you've read your two excerpts, you're coming more moving on from that um, and you can get more information about those two texts from the text notes screencast that I've given you on John Winthrop so this idea of purity they they, they sail across they get here to Massachusetts Bay um, which would later become Boston um, if you're needing kind of a geographical reference so this idea of purity led the Massachusetts Bay colony to lead very religious lives, very pious lives. They were all about the Puritan religion. However, not everything was perfect like they thought it was going to be in this new world. Um, they faced a lot. They almost didn't survive the first winter. In fact, almost 20% of the original um, group of settlers 
perished that winter. It was very hard. Drought, famine, Indian attacks, illness, they faced it all. But they they attributed those things to retribution from God. Um, 